So Jamal Niles here with the legendary King Mo sporting your newly attired MLW hoodie. Yeah, Transferred over to the pro wrestling game. I know you've been a lifelong pro wrestling fan. Um, must have made the walk away from the MMA game that much easier going into another passion of yours. Yeah, you know, um, I love MLW. Love the pro wrestling. I do miss fighting, but at the same time, my body can handle it. Too many surgeries. My chin's gone now from fighting bigger guys. Um, but I had fun doing it. Now with MLW this weekend, I have, actually, yeah, it's good. To, I think today or sometimes maybe tomorrow, my match with Loki should uh, air. Yeah, yeah. I had a good match with Loki. So, but I'm loving, I'm loving um, pro wrestling. I'm loving coaching. I've been coaching MMA since like I was probably 19 and 20. Mm. I cornered uh, my, my boy Jeff Lindsay versus Eves Edwards in Houston. Then I cornered my boy Jeff Lindsay versus Romy Aram, who's a Sada Wad and Georgie, Gorgi Karakarian's coach. So like, I see him all around, but it's, I've been in the game for a while. And okay. now, you know, just I, I'm, enjoy, I'm enjoying, I'm, I'm learning and I'm, I'm teaching. You know, I'm not teaching, I'm kind of giving advice. Hmm. Because we're all, you know, as a as a coach, I teach, but at the same time I give advice. Because I don't want people making, I don't want athletes making the same mistakes I made. Like I feel like the the athletes that are su successful are the ones that can avoid injuries, and the ones that can get with a good team, and the ones can avoid the same you know pit traps and mistakes that the other fighters before them have made. So that is a very rewarding aspect of a different part of your career, isn't it? You've achieved everything that you can possibly achieve in the sport of mixed martial arts and then letting other fighters go and live their dreams as well that's got to be almost an equally great feeling hasn't it than w as winning titles and screwing wins for yourself uh i'm gonna be real with you i think that it's it's harder to yourself it's even harder you know helping someone get there is it yeah because from, from like an ego perspective that's the ego like not not i mean like when you, as yourself, you know what you want to do. Mm. So, like, for instance, say I like this is my athlete, and I'm I'm a, I'm a fighter. And my I'm like Mo, we need a run. My run, lift weights, boom. Now I have my athlete here who is successful as a fighter. Um, I feel like they think they're a good wrestler, but me, I'm like the wrestler be better, and yeah. I'm trying to tell them what to do. A lot of times they fight that they don't want to listen. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to get someone to buy into your buy into what you're trying to tell them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I'm not trying to make money off you. I'm not trying to be a star. I'm trying to help you become a star. You know what mm. I'm saying? I, I'm, it's the point where I don't care to do interviews. Like, I'm doing it with you because like, we're talking about things that involve me. But if it's about fighters, I'm like, you talk to the fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what can I tell you? I, I can't tell you nothing because all I know is the game plan, the strategy, the techniques, and that stuff. And I'm, like, I'm not going to tell you any of that. So, if you want to know anything about the fighter, you talk to him. You want to know anything about the game plan or anything about the fight period itself? You talk to the fighter, not me. Yeah, yeah, Um I'm guessing, is this your first trip to Dublin or have you been here before? I've been here two at the time, so okay. third time. I mean, it's getting the reputation as the Vegas of Europe. It is a, as a brilliant atmosphere here. Yeah. And Bellator have invested a lot in this country and this city. How much do you love coming here and what's your anticipation for tonight? I, you know, I, I like it here. The only thing I don't like is the weather. Yeah. It's just too cold. I know. I saw on your Instagram the pouring Crazy. rain. But shout out to the Dublin Hemp Shop, my people out there. I, I don't know. It's just everybody's here. Everybody, they're cool. Food is good. Nando's is my spot. Nando's, yes. I love yes. Nando's. But everybody here, is, they fight. Boxing's big. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's just different being like, you know, in America, like, I walk around, smell, I get looked at weird. But in, in Ireland, I walk around, I look at that I'm just like, people just, hey, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had guys A bit come more freedom. Me, yeah, bro, I had come, people come up to me asking me if I have weed. <laughs> like, hey, man, yeah, weed. I'm like, yeah, here's, here, smoke this, you know, like, whatever. It's just like, it, it's just different, you know what I'm saying? Like, people are open, like, everybody seems cool. Yeah. You know, everybody seems cool. It's just, it's a, it's a good atmosphere, man. What do you make of the card? It's pretty stacked. <sighs> Is it? Yeah. It's real stacked, you know, um. I, I, I like what Bill is doing as far as investing time and in coming to Europe and we have you know hopefully they'll have a, a an American invasion where they bring a bunch of American fighters over and have like an America versus a, a America versus a Europe card.
because we already had the British invasion where we had the you know the, the Europeans come over and face us in Connecticut. Mm. We should that back and forth have dual meets. Yeah, 100%. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I like that. For me, having been a fan of the sport for a decade, when you were fighting in Strike Force, that was, you know, I would have loved to have seen you come over here and fight, but Strike Force didn't have that international yeah. expansion back then. It was, it's been a slow process, but it's steadily got bigger and bigger with what the UFC has done and Bellator doing this route. Is that something that you look back on and think, I wish Strike Force would have given me opportunities to come and fight? In international territory. That corner to get out. <laughs> oh, in one person. Now, um, but uh, yes and no, because the thing is, we didn't go overseas because we, um, you know, we had we had the Shark Tank, and we had a lot of people from overseas fighting. We had a good international flavor that came to fight over in America. Now, I wish we had a chance to fight in your island more, but back then, like, I don't think that it would have been feasible. And you know, as far as like the the money and the dynamics, like mm. it wouldn't, it, you know, the resources and everything, it wouldn't, it wouldn't doable. It might have been, but I think when they signed Fedor and mm. Overeem and Brett Rogers and uh, Rossi, the Rossi and, guys I've got yeah, them was crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, that um, with Rock Hall, you know, what I'm saying Daniel, everybody, you know, what I'm saying Ramiro, you know, what I'm saying so like when Strikeforce got acquired by Zuffer, yeah, what was your situation back then as to why? That move never oh, happened see, to you. Yeah, so what happened with me is like I felt a drug test for um, I had a supplement and I fell for this thing called the, the strong one or something like that. I forgot what it's called. The strong one. Okay. And uh, took the drug test. I failed it. Went to the commission hearing, and they were asking me questions. I had evidence showing that you know that hey, it's this came from the supplement, but you know they weren't hearing me. And the woman asked me, "Can you read or speak English?" And I'm like, I was kind of offended because I'm a call. I have a cause that you know, Degree, man, a four, four year college degree, bachelor's yeah. in uh, English, like, I mean, um, education. And I just felt offended. So I went, on the, I went on the internet and I said, How about this dumb bitch, Pat Lundvall? She's gonna ask if I can speak English? Fuck you, bitch. I can speak English. Well, the UFC saw them, like, Well, Mo called Pat Lundvall a bitch. It's cut. You know, my, mind you, like, you know, I felt offended. So, like, like, I wouldn't try to call her a bitch like hey, like you know like in the '80s term. Like I was like, in modern time, men can be bitches too, and that was like that too. Like you know, you call anybody can be a bitch, but for some reason, those people took it as oh, most trying to call her a derogatory, a female derogatory term, and to question her, you know, femininity or something like that. I don't know, and and they cut me. So then Bellator signed me. And with regards to the way drug tests are investigated these days. It has come a long way, hasn't well, it? Yeah, because now you have a chance to prove yourself. And does that make you like question, you know, come on, why were you not as open-minded and well, investigative it, it, back then? Because I'd say 50-50 now, if you, through education and the advancements in testing and mm. blood work, because now, like, they can be like, all right, this wasn't enough. Because I, I, cause I, my shit was like, was like a small amount, you know what I'm saying? It was like, like it was like metabolites, like, and... Well, similar thing happened with Nick Diaz, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, a few yeah, years ago, yeah. so, and it was a tiny, yeah, yeah, tiny, tiny trace. You know, but the thing is, like, you know, it is what it is. But now, which is thank God, now they can go back and do more testing, and they can figure out where it came from, and they gave them a chance to prove, prove their case. Because before they're like, Psh, don't matter, failed, failed. Yeah, it was very, um, now, yeah, what, you very know, clean, wasn't yeah, it? Clean, white, yes black, or no? You know what I'm black, yeah. white. You know what I'm saying? Yes or no? But now it's like failed test. Hmm, let's hit, let's hit the beast sample. Hmm, well, we had the give me samples. Yoel Romero yeah. situation, didn't we? Yeah, Which yeah. was wild. That yeah, was crazy. Even with bring all your, 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 your drugs over here, your, your supplements over here, let's test them. Hmm, we found this. Hmm, we found that. You know, like, now they're more thorough with it. But before, nah. Hmm. So now, looking ahead to your year, how does that map out? What is your schedule? How do you split your time between... Because when you were an athlete in MMA, you found a way to split that time between having fights and training and taking part with Impact Pro Wrestling as well. So now you're with MLW and you've got the coaching roles. How does that maintain your schedule? So far, luckily, they haven't coincided. It coincided, so it they works quite well. They haven't, they haven't come across, so like, I think it can't, um, the closest thing to it is if, uh, actually no, so far, I had a week, a week apart. I went to coach some person, and then the next week I had a wrestling match. 
Are you filming these tapings at like a bunch at once? Are you film like three weeks, or is it just yeah. one and then in the next week? And jeez, man, that's so heavy. They, they, they don't want to um, take the film. They film them in half. Yeah. Right. But the thing is, like, I'm getting picked up before, and before I was just doing like a few matches a year. Now this year, I'm trying. I'm planning on being busy. My goal is to wreck shop. A, um, you know, not AEW, not AEW, MLW, yeah, I like yeah. AEW, yeah, yeah. big fan, shout yeah. out to MJF, because he left MLW, went there, yeah. Matt Riddle left MLW, went to WWE, NXT, yeah, yeah. but uh, my thing is, I want to I wanna hold it down for MLW, be a mainstay, but I want to go wrestle in Japan, have an opportunity to wrestle, if I can get a chance to wrestle Wrestle Kingdom. With New Japan, yeah, that would be yeah, awesome, whatever, just that'd be cool. Get a chance to, I, um, you know, whatever. I just want to get just to wrestle in Japan because, like, mm. I, I, I love my Japanese fans. I love Japan even more so. Cause From the rising just, days, yeah. Yeah, rising. And I, you know, I just, it's something about being in Japan that feels good. Shout out to Techno Side over there. <laughs> Techno Side. Yeah, if you had to choose one wrestler in New Japan that you could cross over and go up against, I, I can imagine a few you'd say right now, but who is one that you would love to go up against? Honestly, I love Naito. Yeah. And I like Osprey. Yeah, you know Osprey's saying? awesome, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. One of Britain's own, right? Yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but Britain, I like Marty Skrull a little bit. Than yeah, yeah, the villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, villain, sure, man. man yeah, yeah, I've yeah. got to be a villain club yeah, yeah. shirt. He's tied up with Ring of Honor, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but and NWA Power. Right. Yeah. Because like I love Nick Aldis. Shout out to Nick Aldis, mm. the best promo cutter in the game. I think he's from the UK as well. He is. He is. Yeah, the yeah. Man, he's a good man. The man. I love Nick Aldis, man. Have you had the opportunity to wrestle him back in your TNA days? Did, no, I just got a chance past? to. I just, when he's mad, I got a chance to meet him. Okay. But I didn't know he could cut promos like this. Okay. I knew he was a good wrestler, and I liked it, but I like it more now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Far more, bro. Like if you get a chance to watch him on Power. <sighs> yeah, I like what they've done with man. like the 80s style product yeah, they've got yeah, going yeah. on. It's NWA, old school, man. Yeah, old school NWA. I grew yeah. up watching that. I grew up as an NWA fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like, I like what I'm seeing in pro wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It's good time Impact's to be. Getting, Impact's getting bigger. Mm. See Triple H doing a thing. You're seeing, um, you're seeing um, MLW coming up, uh, AEW, the WWE territory. Yeah, yeah. NXT, yeah, yeah. NXT, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just like I, I like, I like. The, the 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 atmosphere, New Japan, a lot of variety, healthy, man. Yeah, it's all yes. It seems real healthy. It's growing. It's prosperous. I have to ask you as well. I'm guessing. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're a big boxing fan. I can presume that you are. Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, man. We got that tonight. <sighs> what a fight! I thought I thought Tyson was the first one. Yeah. This one, I don't know who's gonna win. Um, if Tyson Fury gets in the inside, Tyson Fury's gonna box his ears off. Mm. And I like the fact that Tyson Fury went to Sugar Hill in Detroit. Great camp. But Deontay bulked up to 231. He looks massive. But he was also that size versus Eric Molina. He looked okay versus Eric Molina, but he always carries that one punch neutralizer. Um, he beat my boy Luis Ortiz, who I used to spar with. Um, I don't know, man. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna be up. Let's go air four, here. Four a.m. Four five a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah it just it's gonna be crazy. In America, people like everybody is like, "Who are you with? Who you got?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like some guys are going back and forth. Like, I got Fury. No, I got Wilder. I got Fury. No Wilder. You know, it's just, you know, it's hard to. Who do you got? Who? Oh, I don't want to say, man. From from a journalist perspective, I feel like I I can't really say. But I I feel like that is gonna be a wild. Yeah, well, I'm, saying, so, well, I'm saying like you guys said, but the thing is like, for instance, like I play like this. If it's short, if it's a short fight, I say Deontay. Yeah, yeah. If it goes longer than six rounds, yeah, that's yeah. I say Tyson Fury gonna win by knockout or by it's by a crazy decision. mashup of styles. But, but the thing is, either way, they, they both because Tyson Fury, if he fights aggressive and, and can land the shots, who knows what he can do? But Deontay can just land one shot. Anytime, but if Tyson freaking in the inside and touch him up and rough him up and wear him down, then that power, like you know, it's not strong. The cut as well is a big factor going into this one. The cut that Tyson yeah, suffered his last fight. the thing fight. is, I don't think it's going to be much of a difference because it's not like Deontay's really that accurate. Like yeah. his jab isn't really educated. You see, like he, he couldn't even, he couldn't barely even land a jab on Tyson. So you don't like, think he's going to go in that fight targeting that cut? When have you ever seen him target anything? We fought Luis Ortiz. What like he was, Luis Ortiz was like like what 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 is this? Luis was like what are you throwing like? And Luis was like easily winning that fight. And he got caught like it's not like it's not like Deontay goes in the fight controlling the fight. I saw him do it versus Burma Burmainster Burn. That's about it. 
But when he fights Tyson Fury, no control. There are times he's yeah. like losing the fight or the fight back and forth, he's losing all of a sudden, he gets that one shot and he wins. That's what so, makes it so interesting with any fight that he yeah. takes part in. Until he gets older, because guys like Daniel Dubois will be a bad matchup as he gets older. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Guys like a Tony Yoko will be bad for him as he gets older, because those guys are young, fresh, and technical. You know what I'm saying? You like what you see from Dubois, like, then, yeah. yeah. I love what I see from Dubois. I think Dubois is the future. Mm. Um, I think he's a bad match. Like my boy Michael Hunter, I think Michael Hunter is the future as well, but Dubois, like, is big, long. Throws. I saw one fight, we fought Gorman. He was throwing yeah. averaging 70 punches around. Mm. I haven't seen anybody do this since, he, since I, I beat Bucci when he fought um, when he fought David Tua. And I'm a big boxing fan too. I'm a boxing head. So yeah, good man. I'm pretty knowledgeable in boxing. Both of those guys were young last year as well. Nathan Gorman, he's got a bright future. Yeah, yeah. Trained by Ricky Atten. Yeah, Nathan Gorman. I, I think he, I think he looked better when he was lighter. You know, he put on that weight. Mm. When I saw him, when I saw him years ago, he was lighter. He, he's slick and smooth. But I don't know if he carries that pop. You know what I'm saying? Um, Let's see what happens in the future, though, with both yeah, of them. Yeah, but maybe I they'll fight they, again down the line. Yeah, yeah maybe, but I still see it. I, I, think that, I, don't think, I don't think Gorman is, I don't know. I think it's long enough. But maybe I'm, I could be wrong. I wouldn't mind seeing him like if he gets better. You know, him versus Kanowski. You know Kanowski? Adam Kanowski? Mm, yeah, yeah. But Kanowski might have too much experience for him. But a build up like that because, you know, Kanowski is a tough, tough um, brawler, fighter. And, uh, Gorman's a slick fighter, a slick boxer. You know, he can punch his quick hands. I don't know, man. There's some great matches in the future. And just as far as Bellator Dublin goes this evening, one match on the card that fans should tune into and why? Ricky Bobby Bandejas um, versus Franz Mugamba. I like that. Because you know, Ricky Bobby Bandejas is the SBG slayer. So you know, we're going to keep That's it going. That's the reputation he's got around here, yeah. yeah we're going to keep it going and hopefully wins this fight. You know, we come back and he can make this his home, his fight town. He come here, fight here. You know, because, hey, he's the bad guy. Say hello to the, everybody loves the bad guy. He can be the villain. Y'all can find somebody, find the great Dublin Hope to beat him. Mm. Good luck finding him. But if they do. Interesting storyline. Yeah, great storyline. Right. I appreciate your time so much. Thank, Thank you very much, man.